Let's talk about setting up an aquarium that really promotes microfauna growth. Microfauna means microscopic animals, and by having a large, diverse population of microfauna in your aquarium, that's going to really support a fish population much better. That's going to be healthy for the fish because they're going to eat that microfauna. It's also going to, by having a diverse microfauna population, having lots of little tiny creatures, that's going to help the stability and balance because each one of those little creatures kind of performs a role, whether that's part of the food web or eating an organism that otherwise would get out of control. A lot of these pest organisms are really only problems in, uh, well, one, overfeeding, but two, in kind of a monoculture. So if there's not a big diversity in life forms, then usually what is there is going to dominate and take over, which becomes uh, sometimes pathogenic, also becomes just uh, unsightly, or that's when they're really considered pests, is when it's a problem. The best, one of the best ways to start to deal with or manage that is increasing the diversity diversity of the microfauna in the, the animals that are there. So the tank or the environment these creatures are in must be suited for that. The small creatures have to have some habitat to hide in and that can be pretty simple. How I would set up a natural style fish tank or microfauna tank would be a thin layer of dirt on the bottom, very thin, some kind of soil, could be soil out of, out of your backyard as long as it's not a treated yard thin thin layer of soil don't bake it don't put the soil in the oven don't kill your soil the soil is alive there are living creatures in there and when you put it in the oven there are still you know you got your base minerals and there is nutrition there but it's dead don't bake it thin thin layer of soil interlap a couple inches of sand pool filter sand works great lots of other sands work great maybe a little bit of a seashell or some kind of carbonate source to help buffer the water that sand also needs to be inert like uh, pool filter sand is usually like a quartz crushed quartz quartz is not going to dissolve into the water and affect your hardness now if you need really 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 hard water you could use something like aragonite sand but most of that sand needs to probably be something like quartz so pool filter sand would work great I think it looks great it's very clean doesn't need rinse then on top of that sand I like to do some kind of rubble like rock layer or you do want to probably have a little bit of buffering in the water like buffering capability you're going to want like a chunk of coral rock you're going to want a little bit of crushed coral some crushed seashells or a seashell layer it doesn't have to be a whole layer across the tank it could be a little pile something to kind of buffer your hardness as your shrimp and snail populations grow they're going to be taking hardness out of the water. Next, you're gonna to wanna to have some leaf litter. All kinds of leaves work. Leaf litter, seed pods. Again, you're creating layers of material that forms habitat for these little tiny creatures. So as long as they can hide away from the fish and they're also gonna eat and consume those leaves and break those down for the environment. Now, as those botanicals break down, that's going to lower your hardness. It's uh, the part of that chemical reaction pulls carbonates out of the water which again is lowering the pH and lowering your hardness. So that's why you wanna have your seashells or crushed coral or coral rock in there to kind of help buffer and keep that from dropping too low. Then you're gonna to wanna to have live plants. I recommend some kind of floating plant on top. You could have some kind of water column feeders like hornwort, stonewort, guppy grass. They don't really have a lot of roots. Now some of them will send down roots like guppy grass will send roots down. You're going to want to also, uh, if you've got that dirt in the bottom, you can really utilize plants that really are heavy root feeders like jungle val or crips or something. Something that's going to send those roots down and really benefit from having that soil in the bottom. Lots of live plants not just a couple you want that tank packed i like a jungle tank i i really like just lots of crazy plants everywhere nothing wrong with that so if you have all that and you're bringing in plants you're going to have some microfauna uh, if you introduce like a microfauna biodiversity pack that's going to be kind of a concentration of different types of life, all kinds of different small, small things like bacteria and little single-celled organisms, all the way up to, you know, getting into rotifers and copepods, then amphipods, then you're going to like 
um, seed shrimps and neocaridina shrimp. You don't have to feed that much. You could feed it fresh things like a little thin slice of cucumber. If you've got one of these tanks set up and it's like a 10 gallon tank and it's got lots of little organisms in it, lots of scuds, lots of snails, you could put like a half inch or quarter inch slice, slice of cucumber in there and they're going to kind of feed and start breaking that down. You could feed a little spirulina powder uh, that'll kind of help some of those uh, filter feeders out. Now, if you put in a half a cucumber into a 10 gallon tank, that's going to be way too much. It's going to create a huge bacteria bloom, cloud up the water. Again, that in itself is not a problem. It becomes a problem if it's so much food and creates so much bacteria that it depletes the oxygen out of the water. Then that can kind of kill some of those larger life forms like shrimp or fish. But having a little clouded tank where you put in a too big of a food source, it clouds up, remove the food source, it'll eventually go away. Don't put anything in the water. You don't have to change the water. Just leave it alone. If things start dying, you could change out some of that water. But you want to feed thin slices. If they eat that cucumber up real quick in a day or two, you can put some more in. But really, you don't have to feed a lot, but in the beginning when you're trying to boost that that microfauna population, being a little heavy on the feeding's fine. Don't be dumping in tons of pellets or tons of flakes. That stuff don't go overboard on. They will do phenomenal. They, they will do so much better in this type of an environment than something that's more of a sterile environment where you're adding chemicals to kill different kinds of algaes or cyanobacterias. Let that stuff go. Just let, let go of that idea that you're going to know what you're doing. Because when you try, when you add a chemical to wipe out a specific problem or a specific algae or bacteria or fungus or disease, that chemical you're adding is wiping out and killing a huge amount of microscopic organisms you can't even see. And those organisms were playing a certain role that was keeping that tank in some kind of balance or stability. Most people, they never even get to the point where their tank is stable because they keep disrupting the balancing acts that are going on to achieve that stability naturally. Set up a natural tank, keep it simple, provide different layers of material for organisms to grow and hide from the fish. Don't feed your fish a lot. Don't feed your fish lots of crap. Try to feed them live food. That's what they want. Don't overfeed your fish. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day.